Good afternoon. Um, it's just past four o'clock. Um, we're about to start. We're just waiting a couple of minutes um, because people are still logging on and turning on their computers. Um, so we are here. We are about to start. But if you all don't mind, um, we're just waiting for a, a minute or so because we can see people are still logging on. Um, just in the meantime, for the ones that are there, I'm Janine. I'll be the one presenting. And um, if I'm running into any issues with my computer, I'll be talking to Anthony. So if you hear a, a male voice on the other end, um, that's Anthony helping me out with all the um, computer and technology. So we still got people logging on. Um, so it won't be very long before we'll start. We should have this nice music going on now, I guess, but. It looks like it might be slowing down with the logons at the moment. Or the computer has slowed down, one of the two. Just having a look, everything is working here. Now, there's still people logging on. So I'm just holding off for a couple of minutes. In the meantime, if you do have any issue that you can't hear us, I believe on the right hand side, there's a chat box. So put in your message or your um, comments if you've got any issues with sound or um, if you can't see the screens, please let us know. Yep, people are still turning up. So a couple of minutes doesn't matter. So we just wait probably one more minute and then we might start soon. I'm having my last bit of my cup of tea here. Yeah, we still got a couple more logging on, I think, by the looks of it. It's like everybody's late for class. They're all trickling in. And just having a look. I think I might get started. Um, just checking with Anthony on the other side. Do you think we should get started? Because it looks like it's slowed down now. Yeah, I, I think you can start, uh, Jenny. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. That's fine. Because it looks like it's slowed down and, oh, well, yeah. we get more turning up. Yeah, no, that's all right. We, we're... We have, it looks like most people are there and some might just join in a couple of minutes. Um, I've got the webcam on so you can see uh, my face, which might be quite nice, but I will be shift, um, switching it on in a, in a minute. Before I start, um, I just wanted to say, I have my dog next to me, which she normally does as a walking time. So um, she's asleep next to me, but she's a rather big dog. So if she's going to start barking, um, I will put the headset, I will apologise and put my headset down and quickly stick her outside. And then we should be fine for the rest of the, the, the um, webinar. Um, one of the joys of everybody being at home with my son is in the room that is the quiet room and we can chat, but he's got an exam and um, that wasn't planned when I was having this one. So I do apologise. Okay, um, we've got probably most people turned on. So I'm just going to go to my slide. Okay. So good afternoon basically to everybody. Um, I'd like to thank you for attending this webinar on bilateral peripheral um, edema. 
I'm just having a look if that's correct. Yep. First, a reminder that today's webinar will be recorded. So you will be able to reference it again. So I don't stress if you just quickly have to dash out to grab something or a glass of water, um, you can look at it later again. I'll be taking questions at the end of the webinar. And I would also like to direct you to our website, uh, which is www.mobiderm.com.au. Um, this has all the product guides plus information on training and more case studies. Um, now, um, just having a quick look. Yep. No, I just want to make sure I um, finish with the basics. Again, for the ones that just turned up, um, in that box, there should be a chat box, which you can type your messages or your questions, so we can deal with that afterwards. Uh, the session runs for about 45 minutes um, from starting, not 45 minutes from four o'clock. Um, so if you've got any questions, please um, write them down and I can have a look at it later, I guess, and answer them to the best of my ability. My name is Janine whitlock -Sultans. Um I'm a lymphedema physiotherapist working in private practice in the northern suburbs of Brisbane. I originally graduated in the Netherlands in 1992 and migrated to Australia in 1993. I've been working in private practice for 27 years and I've been a lymphedema therapist for 24 of those 27 years. In 1996, I started um, or I attended the um, lymphedema course conducted by Hildegard, um, who most people know quite well. Um, and um, that was at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Um, and in 2002, fairly quickly after that, I attended the Advanced Lymphedema Management course, again with Hildegard. So I was very lucky to be taught by, um, by her for both courses. Uh, I've been to many ALA conferences and continue to attend courses, webinars, anything that I can read to improve my knowledge about lymphedema. I treat a small amount of orthopedic patients in my clinic, but mostly I treat acute and chronic lymphedema patients, some lipedema patients and some venous insufficiency. I would like to take the opportunity to give you a quick introduction to the companies that are offering the webinar today. So firstly, Medical Rehab, um, which was established in Victoria, Australia, 2010. It is the sole distributor for the Mobiderm range in Australia and is committed to providing therapists and patients with not only high quality product solutions, but also with ongoing support and education. Medical, medical Rehab also stocks rehabilitation products, scooters, body supports and more. They also employ six lymphedema therapists in six different states to run the workshops. Um, they're also, those people are also the clinical advisors for lymphedema therapists in their state. So for the therapist here from Queensland, I'm your advisor. So um, you're more than welcome just to drop me a line if you've got any questions or give me your ring. Tuan is a French company that was founded in 1847 and is the manufacturer of the Mobiderm and Vino Flex range. Every product is designed with close collaboration with those involved in the medical treatment of the patient and Tuan. Tuan creates and distributes medical devices that enables patients and consumers to become more active players in their own health. And Medical Rehab is, the, is proud to be the sole supplier of Tuan Lymphology range in Australia. So we'll get to our, now I hope it's working, my next slide. And I'm, I did get the message that it might be slow, so I'm just, because it's not going to the next page. Hang on, I'm just having a look. Yep, no, it looks like it's working. Hopefully it stays this way um, because I hit the button twice. So anything can happen, but we'll go back to that. Um, so an introduction to this patient. Uh, today I've chosen a case study um, as this person was quite a challenge to improve his lymphedema due to his comorbidities. Just a little bit of background information about the patient um, when he arrived, arrived at our clinic. So not even his, his medical issues. So when he arrived, the patient was initially treated at a practice 20 kilometers from his home. Now he's actually a DVA client, he's a TPI. Um, for the people who don't know what it is, it's totally imper permanently impaired. And um, they get taxis, if you, if you go to anything like that, you can apply for taxis to see physios. You have to be over the age of 80 to get it automatically reimbursed. But if under that age, which he was, I think he's 70 when he came to see me, 
um, they have to actually get special permission. So DVA refused to continue to pay for taxi fares. Um, so he presented with a referral from uh, like for this practice in September 2019. He only had one set of bandages of each leg. So the bandages were rather stiff due to all the leaking fluid from his legs. These bandages were removed uh, and applied on the same day of his appointment at the previous practice. So he'd only had one set and he was just taking it off in the morning, putting it back on straight after that. Due to these bandages being reused on the same day, the patient had not been able to have a shower for three weeks. Now with the leaking fluid um, in the bandages, the smell was quite horrendous. It wasn't particularly the, the most pleasant um, thing to smell in the morning when he arrived. It looks like my PowerPoint is not playing up, so I'm just, I've clicked it again, but I'm not really sure if that's, oh, there we go, that's better. So, um, we've got a couple of slides here, two slides. Basically, when I saw this patient, I took some photos. And the reason why I took photos, because there were so many things wrong when he arrived that I just didn't want to be liable for them blaming me for doing that. So I actually took photos on the full first day. Um, the left leg, and I only took a couple of photos so I could actually have proof and um, didn't think at that stage I was going to do this webinar. So his left foot um, was being held together here with, um, oh, and now it's doing something by itself. That's the next slide, but we need to go back. Um, hopefully we can go back. If I start talking about this one, that's the second one, but you can have a good look already. Um, why is it not going back? There we go. All right, so it's being held together by um, microport tape, the skin color one. Here, there's a big chunk of uh, just normal sports tape. That's the way it was being kept together. Now, um, this part, that was the right leg. I'm gonna see it, the right leg. Um, it was actually split, so there was some padding underneath. So this bit had the white padding as well as the, um, like a piece of uh, foam underneath, but obviously he was like that for days, so not ideal. Now this is the toe, um, again, not ideal. It looks like to me that they've reused the, the bandages, I could be wrong, um, but if you can see here, it's quite stretched. So here he's got a bit of compression, but here it's very stretched. Um, it's one thin layer and that was certainly not doing the job. Here you can see it's all frayed, quite dirty down the bottom. And that's just the way um, the patient uh, came to the practice. You can see the very poor skin color, um, obviously had some circulation problems. Um, you can see the toes there as well. So not particularly ideal. So now to the case presentation. Um, there was minimal information from the GP. Um, the only information I received was from the previous therapist who wrote a, a lovely referral letter, it was very nice. Um, I have tried to contact the GP on several occasions. I never got a reply. I ended up trying to ring the clinic, um, never got a reply. I don't really think the GP knew what to do with this particular patient. Um, and then towards the end of it, the GP moved practices. So I think the care factor wasn't particularly high. So a 70 year old male with referral of bilateral peripheral edema. In June, 2019, um, he had a stroke on the left side of his brain, which required surgery um, and the patient fully recovered. I'm not sure if he actually really fully recovered. Um, to me, it didn't seem to be your average 70 year old, um, but I haven't got nothing to compare it with. He had a heart attack, a heart attack in 2017, um, which is controlled and monitored by the specialist. He also had a melanoma removed from the left shin. Um, the date is completely unknown. Um, he's got a skin grafted. I asked the patient and I asked his wife who came in with him and they absolutely cannot remember if it was like a year ago, two years ago or five years ago. So again, no information from the GP, so I left it at that. Um, he's a type two diabetic. He had an ulcer of his left lower leg when he um, presented, um, but he has had a history of ulcers. Um, he couldn't really tell me how many, but he had several. 
He's got severe osteoarthritis of the lumbar spine. Um, he's an ex-Vietnam vet. Um, and a lot of the vets, we're very close to the army barracks here and we get a lot of vets and a lot of um, Vietnam vets or, you know, any vets that have really bad backs. Obviously he's obese um, with a bad back and not moving a lot. Um, he definitely put on the weight. He has a very sedentary lifestyle and um, unfortunately he only sleeps in his recliner because of the pain in his legs. And I've just seen that my slide has gone through to the medication one. I'm not that far ahead yet. I'm just trying to go back or hopefully not least further. So while, just trying to, oh, there we go. Um, so while the patient was in hospital for his stroke, he complained a lot about sores and painful areas of his lower legs. The nurse's solution was to elevate his legs and put tube grip on his lower legs. And we believe that's where the, um, the current ulcer is from. So. Now I should be all right. Um, he had a, quite a comprehensive list of medication. You can see there's quite a few for the heart, um, not surprising. He's on his warfarin for anti-clothing. He's got high blood pressure. He has antiarrhythmia drug. Now I really don't know again if it was for ventricular fibrillation or tachycardia or both, no idea. Um, never ended up getting that information more high blood pressure medication, cholesterol, he's got reflux, one of the reasons why he likes to sit in the, the recliner chair. Um, he's got medication for diabetes, his airways, skin allergies, um, and he actually still has some mild skin allergies um, on his arms, he gets very itchy. Luckily, he's not flexible enough to get to his legs, um, otherwise he would be scratching them as well. He's on vitamin D, He's currently only on paracetamol for his back pain. Apparently he's been on much stronger medication, um, but the GP has reduced this um, as um, he felt he was on way too many pain, um, pain medications and he had issues with his bowel, which he was on Coloxal and Senna for as well. And I believe he's still on that. Okay, so on the first visit, um, this is when the bandages were removed. You kind of think maybe it doesn't look too bad the colour, but you will see the difference later. Um, so on the first visit, I conducted both a subjective and objective examination. And I also took circumferential measurements. Um, this is a photo of the leg when the bandages were removed. The front was extremely dry and dead skin was literally flaking off. Um, it was falling off. I've, got one but it was just a little bit hard to see where the red tail had all this white um, all these white flakes on it it really looked like it was snowing um, the back of the leg had some small wounds um, unfortunately I didn't take photos of that I did have a few photos but they were really dark um, because they were taken with my phone um, now in this photo um, it's very hard to see the, the bad color of his leg but I'll try to point it out so here um, this is sort of below that, the skin color was quite good, but as you can see above that, it was quite dark. You see the darkness in there, but it actually extends all the way up to the top. But the condition of the skin was so bad. Um, you can't really see the, the leaking fluid um, because I kind of dried him by the time I took the photo, but the skin condition was just that bad. You just couldn't see through that thick layer of like dead skin that was sitting on top. Um, so the first step was to remove those bandages, obviously. Educate the patient on hygiene, moisturising the leg, and very gentle exfoliating the legs because I needed to get the change in that before I even decided to bandage or look at any system of bandaging. He was, because he's too big, he couldn't um, moisturise himself or exfoliate, but thank God his wife was quite capable and she did a tremendous job. She did it exactly by the letter, probably a little bit too well. And you will see that on a, another slide. Um, so the other thing that really concerned me, and again, the, it's doing its own thing at the moment, the slide. Um, the, the next step that I wanted to do, because with DVA, you have to um, apply for approval and uh, the expense of garments or wraps or order fit socks, everything takes a while to be approved. So the, the first step I did was in getting in contact with a GP um, because I needed to organise an ABPI of both legs. Um, unfortunately, the health system um, only lets you to have one, like 
let you have one leg examined at the, at the day, per day. Um, now, I don't know if that's a DVA rule or a Medicare rule. Um, and then unfortunately where he was going, which was the closest to his house, um, the, the radiologist, or sorry, the radiographer that was there, um, the sonographer, um, they were only there once a week for that particular issue. And so he had one done one week, had to wait three days, one done one week, and then one the week after. So it wasn't great, but at least it was a start. Um, okay, so we had quite a few concerns for this patient. Um, so after the examination, I, I just wanted to address a few issues that we needed to deal with. So number one was blistering um, of the skin, which I assume was caused by the bandages. I'm not sure, but it looked like there was quite a lot of friction there. He had significant weeping edema um, because the skin was simply blistering underneath the, the dead skin. The patient was in a lot of pain due to the swelling of his lower legs and the bandaging itself as well. We, um, I was really keen to reduce that ulcer first up, uh, so I referred him back to the GP for monitoring and dressing the ulcer. As he had a stroke and heart issues, I, and here it goes again, it's not playing nice with me today, there we go. Um, as he had a stroke and, um, and heart issues, I assumed his AVPI was measured, but unfortunately that was not done prior to starting at the other clinic. So I'd been there for three weeks. Then we had to look for appropriate shoes and I really wanted to get him uh, in bed instead of sleeping in the recliner. Even though for his reflux, he had to be propped up, I'd still preferred him into his bed just to reduce more ulcers and, and other problems. Um, so, the first one, or one of the first things that I noticed, and that's why I took a photo, and the bottom one, I put them side to side to actually show that there is a difference, but the bottom one should have been even a bit more to the front. And I put a line there because, um, as you could see, the patient actually, kept, as he was walking in, he kept tripping, and I couldn't work out why he was tripping. And, um, and, and I was like, I checked the shoes, and he was actually wearing two different sizes. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't know who supplied these for him. Um, and I've noticed then after that, because we didn't have anything else at the time, that the, the bigger shoe that he was wearing, he kept tripping over. So overall, if you're going to get bandaged or anything, you certainly don't want to have, you don't want to be rocky and unbalanced on your feet. So this really didn't add to the patient's, um, um, it wasn't particularly beneficial for the patient. So. Um, I just quickly want to touch on the AVPI um, because probably when I started, I didn't realise how important that could be for the patient. Um, so AVPI stands for Ankle Brachial Pressure Index. So with a Doppler, Doppler ultrasound, the pressure of the brachial art artery is measured and it doesn't matter, they measure both the right and the left. Then they measure the posterior tibial artery and the dorsalis pedis artery. Now, the formula that they're working it out, um, I've got down there. And um, so say it's the left side, left leg, they actually take the highest pressure of the, either the posterior tibial artery or the dorsalis pedis artery. And they divide that by the highest brachial pressure. Now, the highest brachial pressure, even though it's for the left leg, can be the right side. So it's a little bit confusing how they work it out. Thank God we don't have to do that. So we usually get a number. So I've got an example down the bottom. And um, and again, it's not playing nice with me. Here we go. Um, so on the, um, uh, the right, it's giving you a number and it's 0.64. So now I'm going to go to the next slide. Now I've actually put that in as a reference because this is recorded. You can actually look back at it. Um, so if this patient has particular issues, you cannot bandage or you have to really adjust your bandaging or doing a lot lighter, depending with which other problems he has. Now, um, this particular patient, so for this particular patient, it was really important to make sure what his API was, just considering the skin, the way the whole leg looked. Um, so we're gonna go back to the patient. So this actually, I hope everybody's got a strong stomach with some of these um, photos. 
Um, so the photos you see here are after only three days of moisturising and exfoliating. Um, as you can see, it's not white anymore. There's actually colour in his leg because it's all slowly flaking off. As you can see, um, I'll point out, this is the back of the leg. There's a big chunky um, bit sitting there that it's almost looked like there'd been an ulcer and it's, I don't know what happened to that bit, but it looked rather strange and it was very hard to deal with. Um, here you see that the skin is cracked. He's got quite a few over his legs. He's got a small one there, but underneath, this, the leg was weeping. Again, I just um, I cl cleaned it up before I took the photos and I can't because I've got my little screen here and I, hopefully I can change it. So on this one, um, this is the interesting one here, you've got weeping areas as well in there. But can you see the scratches up there? They're white lines. Now that was his wife being way too vigorous. Um, she was exfoliating and was it was coming off so well. So she thought, oh, I'll just scrub a little bit harder. And I kind of had to, had to tell her like, whoa, go a little bit easier on this, um, your husband. It's just a little bit too much. Um, so yes, she did a good job, um, but she was almost scrubbing it back. It was like she was sanding a table down rather than actually gently exfoliating. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. There we go. Um, so the patient was moisturising for 17 days, uh, 17 days, not 70, sorry, that's my accent. Um, while the ABPI was measured, um, it took 10 days to have the first ABPI measured to get an appointment and get the referral. And then it took another seven days to have the other leg done. Both legs unfortunately showed significant atherosclerosis and therefore a proper ABPI could not be determined. Um, I spoke to the um, radiologist who does all the reports there and yes, he he, ha he saw the legs of the gentleman as well and definitely said no, no go on like bandaging. Um, so particularly um, with the, the short stretch bandages, that was not an option. So luckily, while he's moisturising and exfoliating his legs, I applied through DVA for a Molbyderm Autofit garment. Um, not because I'm actually doing the workshops, but I felt for him it was the, the most gentlest form of um, reduction of fluid. And and I felt as well, like the reason why I, I chose it was um, he's very sedentary. Uh, this product can be used quite well in conjunction with some basic exercises like plantar and dorsiflexion. So even if he sits down, he doesn't walk a lot he can still actually stimulate these lymphatic vessels. Um, even if the ABPI would allow him to be bandaged, then we can still use that Molbyderm um, as a night garment after the bandaging was finished. So I, I knew that I was going to use it either way, um, in which way we just had to wait and work out. Now, these were some of the other reasons. Um, so for my initial choice of, of choosing Molbyderm for this gentleman, um, it stimulates lymphatic vessels to remove the lymphatic load, um, as I said, due to during some movement, any movement he has. Um, it reduces rebound by activating the initial lymphatic vessels. It reduces filtration. It softens fibrosis. And then the benefits of a mobidum garment, for like another reason to, for choosing it for this patient, was the ease of use. Um, you know, the elderly people, they don't have like carers. Their daughter lives next door, but they don't have carers. Um, so their daughter could help. And um, so we just, um, I, I was just a lot happier with that. Um, it's highly adaptable and particularly for this patient, if he was getting a little bit of extra swelling in his leg, he only had to undo the tabs. And I'll explain to you how the, the garment works in a minute, but he could actually just undo a couple of the tabs loosen them up for that time being. And then maybe if he was, you know, capable to tightening up again, he could. So it was really highly adaptable for him. Uh, a fast reduction. Um, for him, it was easy to move around in compared to the Richard bandages. The patient had very poor balance and um, the padding underneath his feet and as well as the shoes that he was wearing with it really made his balance a lot worse, which put him at risk of falls, which I really wanted to prevent. So I was much happier with um, 
the, the way that the garment is because it's much thinner underneath. So he could actually feel the ground that he was walking on much better. It's reusable and washable, so particularly with the leaking fluid, that was very easy to wash. Cost effective um, because it's reusable and washable. Some bandaging systems, depending which one you choose, um, can be reused, but some cannot be reused. The ones that can be reused um, are the ones um, that like you can wash all the time, but then you have to have two sets. And that's probably why he only had one set to start off with. Um, so the other one was patient's autonomy. So he didn't, he wasn't relying, like even though he couldn't put it on himself, he didn't have to rely on anybody else um, uh, except for his wife and his daughter who lived next door. Actually had two daughters and a family living next door um, that could come out and help him when required. So I've got a video here um, because I don't know how um, familiar everybody is with the Mobiderm product um, and the Mobiderm Autofit. So um, I've got two videos um, that I'm using. I'm going to play the whole video first and then I'm actually going to go back to explain a couple of things, particularly for the people don't, that don't um, haven't seen this before. So cross fingers, it will work. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Yep. Okay, I'm just, oh, now I can't get to this bit, guys. So just give me a second. I need to move this particular box here. Um, I'm just looking, I'm just checking with Anthony. Um, was this, could you guys hear the sound? Because there's just music in the background of that video um, and uh, something popped up that the sound might not have been working. But it looks like it's going all right, I think. I don't hear anything back. Okay, I hope everybody can still, no, not working. Okay, I don't know why that's not working. Okay, nobody can hear me at the moment. Um, yes, we can hear you. Okay, we can hear you. All right. Sorry about that. I hope everybody could see the video though. 
Um, so maybe it was the video that decided to cut my sound out. Um, I wasn't talking during the video anyway. Um, I just let it run. Um, so I'm just going to go back. Um, so I apologize for the hiccup there. Um, I'm going to go to 104 that I will quickly want to show you. Um, bear with me for a minute. Oh, and it doesn't want to go back. So it's not playing ball at the moment. Okay. Yes, video is good, just not sound. Okay. Well, that's fine. I don't mind about the sound because that's not the important bit. Um, ah, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So what I wanted to show you, um, so unfortunately you guys didn't hear the sound of the video. It's only music in the background. So it's probably a little bit more boring. Um, if you can't hear the, the sound, but it is actually the, the text is next to it. So you should be able to hear or see what, what they're trying to explain. Um, in this one, this is the Mod Bidurm product. And you basically have like little squares and I'll get back to the different sizes of it later. Um, so you've got these little squares that are actually in the inside here of the garment. And due to muscle pressure on here, you get different um, pressure gradients between the blocks um, and therefore get the, the initial lymphatic vessels um, will start filtration. So um, I hope that kind of makes sense. I've got like, uh, I'm trying to get it without playing that video. So it stuffs it up all the time but I don't think I can get the right bit. But if you see the video again, you will see that when you get pressure down here, the pressure goes down that part as well. Now, although I'm doing it on the, um, I'm going to 208, sorry, just want to show something that I really, really liked on the arm garment, even though I'm doing it on the order fit sock and for this particular patient. Um, this picture I really want to quickly put in uh, because I don't know if anybody else will be touching on this bit. What I like about the AutoFit um, arm sleeve, um, if you're cooking or washing your hands or going to the toilet, it's um, very easy um, to just roll that bit up, take it out, roll it up, undo it, do it up at the top, and then wash your hands and continue with what you're doing. So you don't have to um, doff the whole uh, sleeve. And then quickly at 2.30, I want to make sure we fit everything in. Um, so that's the arm one. That's a thigh high stocking and that's the sock. And that's the one we're talking about later. All right. Oh, and that's not what I wanted. Okay. So we've got another video here. So give me a second. Everything's a little bit slow because everybody's learning from home. Um, so this one should get started. Might be boring again.
Okay, I'm hoping everybody can hear me again. Um, I'm just going to point out a couple of things in this video. Oh, sorry. That's not what I wanted. Um, okay, here we go. So I'm just going to go back again. Oh, no, it's, it's not playing fair with me today. Um, 155, I just want to show you something. One more. Okay, here you can see um, that one side is done up um, and then the garment is applied and then the other side is done up. So one side is done up already. Um, I have a, quite a few patients that use this one. They do one side up, except maybe for the last couple of tabs because it's easy to reach there. And secondly, um, they have quite rather big legs. So the tabs just reach on the top. So don't stress if, if your patients feel that it's more comfortable to do that. Then I'm gonna go to this bit, which I really like. So we talked about this particular patient uh, having poor balance, being obese, sedentary lifestyle. Now you can see those little dots there and they're basically the dots that you get if you go to hospital and you get those socks with those glue dots underneath. I call the glue dots, they're not glue dots, but um, they're sticky dots. So get much better balance. And you can also see that's quite thin. So he actually has much better feel of his feet when he's walking. So therefore it's just a lot safer option. I'm just going to go through to 130 to show you something else. I will have to get there. Oh. Okay, so I just wanted to show the, the little uh, pluses, crosses, pluses. So the middle one is one. So when you do one side up, you might be all the way out on three. If you do the other side up, you want to make sure that you do that up on three as well. If that side suddenly, that one started at three and that one is all the way to one, you're obviously better on or better off putting that one on two and putting that one on two. So um, make sure they're trying to be equal. So you've got equal garment fabric on each side, which is a lot more beneficial. And then I'm actually going to go back a little bit. 122. Um, so this is probably not something that um, uh, you should do with your patients. Um, but I just want to say one patient um, I have has uh, an order fit sock. She actually has a lot of comorbidities as well. And she has really large legs, nothing wrong with her. The swelling's not too bad. She just got really big upper parts, um, of the, like the upper part of that leg. So I've actually sewn uh, extra piece of Velcro, extra white Velcro, I think it's 10 centimeters, seven centimeters. And I've just sewn them on and you can just do them up. So the patient actually finds it easier. She can loosen that up when it gets a bit tight over there. Now, I did that because it was a DVA client and getting a new complete size was way more difficult, like way more expensive than, um, you know, to buy, to order two new ones. Um, and that way, and it's working perfectly fine. It's not how it's designed to be. It's not how they sell it. And you will lose your warranty if you do that. So this is just in case a patient suddenly gets a lot bigger the patient doesn't want to pay straight away for a bigger one. Might be an option, but you will lose your warranty. I'm sure about it. I haven't asked them. Um, this is what I do as a therapist. So I'm going to go to the next. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. So this is the Moviderm product. So the foot part of that autofit garment has got the smaller ones in it. So five by five millimeters. The five by five millimeters you can also get. Oh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny, but I think it's a metre because I order it and I just don't look at it. So it's about a metre. Um, and you use it for feet, hands and breast. But this is the part that's got sewn in the order fit garment in the hand or in the foot part. So you will see much smaller dots, basically. You will see that later on the patient as well. The larger ones, they're 15 by 15 millimetres. Um, you can also buy them by the roll. Um, but that's the bigger one where it's the for the usually used for the limbs. Um, so that's what I've done for this patient as well. And obviously you can use them as chip bags and all other things, but that's not what we're talking about at the moment. So this is the garment the patient is wearing. Um, so the, the right picture is the one in the brochure that you get. So you can actually see it comes in four different sizes and four different lengths. Now, the you just have to measure those three points up. That gives you um, a measurement for this area. And then you do the length as well. And that gives you the either short, normal, long, or extra long. Um, so 16 different sizes. And that should, most people, 
fit in them. So that's why I'm not advocating on um, adjusting the, the sock or in any shape or form, but um, I had to do it with one lady. Um, it just gives you an option, particularly if people are very cash strapped, because eventually if that one deteriorates, they will buy a new Mobyderm sock anyway. So what I did, um, I took measurements um, of the, the, the patient when he arrived. As I said in the beginning, I didn't know he was going to be this case study. So um, I did initial um, measurements. Then I did uh, measurements after one week of skincare only, so no compression. Three days with Moby doing older fit sock and skincare. Um, and I'll tell you later why I did the three days and then again after four weeks. Um, so what I've done, I've done the measurements in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You can have a look at it. What I did, I put it in another slide and which to me is a much, it, it's much easier to see. I'm not a statistician, so um, this would not be research as such, um, but you can see the blue, to the blue line was the, um, uh, after three weeks of short stretch bandages. So he already been benched for three weeks with the short stretch. Um, the orange line was after seven days of skincare only. The gray line was after wearing the Mobyderm Autofit for three days. Um, his wife and him were very lovely, but weren't particularly the brightest. So um, they actually didn't have the garment tight enough. They just went like, oh, it just has to fit around there, that'd be fine, even though I instructed them how to do it. So I changed the instructions and um, then I did it after four weeks. Well, I actually did it after that, but they had it on properly. So then I did it after four weeks. Um, and you can see his leg actually has reduced. And the part that I really like is if you compare after three weeks of bandaging, which is quite a, a while of bandaging already, he's even reduced. And the, the, the worst of the swelling was in his lower leg here on the left. So he's actually reduced without compromising the circulation. Um, you can see here between the blue and the yellow, again, blue and yellow here is about the same. You can see here the grey jumps out because they had it way too loose. So there was just, um, it was just room for fluid to sit in. Uh, and that's why it's very interesting to see that it doesn't look like it was working till I instructed them correctly. And you can see it's come down very nicely. Now I've done the same for um, the other side. Um, so that was the initial presentation again, one week skincare, three days of Mobyderm, four weeks of Mobyderm. Again, I've got the um, the measurements, but it's there as a reference. And again, I did exactly the, the, the same thing. Um, and as you can see, it has worked really well for the other leg as well. And you can see again, they didn't have the, the tabs up properly. So the gray lines were quite high, but then four weeks later, it came down very nicely. So um, just wanted to show you his legs after three days of Mobyderm only and 14 days of skincare. So we've got a rather different leg here already, a much healthier looking leg. Now you can see the lovely indentations from the Mobyderm and you can see the, sh the smaller ones on the foot and the big ones on the leg. Now you can, um, I've got the, I think the next slide. Yep, so this slide, is the start where you couldn't see color at all and it's not the lighting you really couldn't see anything and this line where you could see where the discoloration starts um, this is actually that line now here you could see there's a little bit darker it's a little bit darker but you can see it extends all the way up there and not too bad there and this is where most of the fluid was sitting here you couldn't even see the color of the leg um, and then the foot you couldn't see much either. So it, it's quite a difference to, um, I didn't have a close up of the toes, so I probably should have done that. Um, but um, fortunately I didn't take one of the toes, but like the toes, very bad discoloration, but still um, much better. So um, although I initially applied a Mobidum garment to reduce the swelling, I decided in conjunction with the patient um, and his wife, to use a wrap for the daytime. Um, he's got a very sedentary lifestyle and because the Mobyderm is a little bit bulkier up the top itself, we basically use the Mobyderm during the night um, to reduce the swelling as well and um, a wrap so it was easier to, to, for him to walk around in and it wasn't the foot, it was actually easy to put into a shoe because it was a little bit less bulky so he could actually fit 
in a shoe. It's it's not ideal what he's got, but it's better. So um, basically, the choice of changing to a wrap during the day and then Molbiderm at night improved the compliance of the patient. Um, but we actually took a couple of months to get the wraps because it takes a while to get approval. So in the evening and night time, he wears the Molbiderm Autofit sock. Um, and he does his exercises, mainly watching TV, doing dorsiflexion, uh, plantar flexion. Um, and then uh, in the morning, he just gets up, has a shower, and then his wife, or actually his daughter, applies the, the wraps. He continues his skincare. Um, he does need to be remi reminded, so he sees me on, regular, um, on a regular basis. Um, I've asked him to inspect um, for ulcers. Uh, and I check for ulcers as well, um, because he's, I think we had one after that. Um, we had to address the shoe wear, so I referred him to the podiatrist, but that because DVA and approvals, it takes a very long time. Um, now the patient has a rather sedentary lifestyle, even though you try, he's got PTSD as well. Um, and he was actually getting pretty down um, with all the pain in his legs when he was at the other practice. So it was very hard to motivate him. Um, so he was sitting a lot and he found, well, we found that he actually had a lot of heel pain as such. Now, even though I kept telling him, get up and do all these things, he, he wasn't. So we ended up, now I might pronounce this incorrectly because I normally don't use these, but I assume they're called Mepilex, um, heel dressings. And it's a silicon heel dressing. And what you do, it comes in a big pack and with DVA, Physios can't order them, but uh, GPs can. So I wrote a letter to GP and that was one thing he did do. And I put it down the bottom of um, his heel and then cup it up so it sits around the Achilles tendon. And what I got him to do, even though it sticks and it's a one use, I got him to use it a few times and that worked really well. So no pain in the heels anymore. Now, hang on, we're going to go back again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the last time I saw the patient was at the start of COVID-19. Now, due to his heart and respiratory problems, um, the GP ordered him to self-isolate. And there was absolutely nothing I could do. I couldn't really go for home visits. Um, we couldn't really do very much. So um, I'm due to see him, I think, next week or the week after. So I'm going to do new measurements and, and see how we go. Um, hopefully, he's stuck to the regime. I had telephone contact, but um, that was about it. So. The concerns we had with this patient was the blistering of the skin. Um, now, he still gets an occasional blister with uh, the wrap or the mobiderm, but only occasionally, and it's only a very small one. Um, and as far as I know, um, it's looking really good. The weeping edema that came with the blistering skin as well has reduced. It's going a bit too quick for me. Um, we reduced his ulcers. Um, quite nicely. So he only had one small one. I'm just going to go next page on oh, next one. Uh, the pain associated with the increased size of his legs and the wrapping has reduced. Um, so um, his ABPI has been measured and basically we could not continue with short stretch bandaging. So that was really good that we knew what we could and couldn't do. So that was rather important for him. Find appropriate shoes, which is being addressed. We, um, we got him to sleep in his bed instead of his recliner because reduced pain, uh, the mobiderm he could keep on at night and not actually having any pain at night. And we had um, basically um, nice filtration of the fluid. So, and it's playing up with me again, technology. Um, so quite a few of those issues that were a real concern have now stopped or have been majorly reduced. So the Mobiderm Autofit, like in conclusion, basically, the Mobiderm Autofit sock has reduced and controlled the bilateral peripheral edema at the same rate as the short stretch bandages, as you could see. The Mobiderm Autofit sock offered a great alternative to reduce the swelling, as his options are limited due to his heart and circulation issues. Um, due to the ease of application, the visits to the clinics were reduced, which was rather important for him, as he has many other medical appointments um, heart, GP, he sees um, another physio for his back, he sees another podiatrist, and that's only some of the, the medical appointments. Um, the, ease of, the ease of donning and doffing the garment um, was really important. 
So due to the ongoing skin care um, of the patient and the fact this enabled his wife to be part of the treatment. Other therapists and nurses have found it really easy to don and doff the Mobiderm Autofit sock. So they were really happy with it as well. And they actually found that easier than uh, a wrap. So if he went out, he used to put the, the Mobiderm on. The, the patient suffers from a lot of lower back pain and struggles um, with wearing bandages or compression garments when he's in a lot of pain. So the Mobiderm Autofit garment is so adjustable and can easily just adjust it on that one tab as I, as I showed you on the garment. If there's one at the top that's a bit tight, you can just undo it and, and loosen it up fairly quickly. So this is the patient when he kind of finished. I got this one off the internet, it's not mine. Uh, hopefully it's, it's not copyrighted, but it just gave him a lot more freedom. He could actually move around again. Um, as I mentioned, because of COVID-19, um, I didn't see him again uh, and I'm due to see him soon. So I'm hoping that, um, um, yeah, that basically um, he still continues to do well and that we don't have to start from scratch. Um, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Tuan and um, uh, Medical Rehab and myself. And i just like to thank you for attending this webinar. If you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to, um, to type in into the chat. If you don't have any questions or you think of something later, you're more than welcome to, um, to email, I assume, if it's okay with Jenny, uh, to email it to Medical Rehab and she can pass them on to me. Um, it was my pleasure to, to do this webinar and I hope you all got a little bit more out of um, what Mobiderm can do and particularly in a complex patient. Down the bottom, I've got here on the last slide um, the website where you can find all the information uh, from uh, Mobiderm. And Jenny just said, yes, you can send uh, any um, questions through to her. Um, so if you um, have any questions, Go to the Mobiderm website, mobiderm.com.au. I think I've just said it, the word that often. Um, I'm struggling over it. And um, there's a lot of information, a lot of cases. And I think any of the local therapists will be quite happy to um, assist you in any way um, with your patient. So thank you very much for attending and enjoy the rest of your evening.